This week, China passed a controversial security law for Hong Kong, which puts the people there under the same speech restrictions as the mainland. It is a chilling law that will be used to suppress political dissent and may destroy this international center of trade and what has been China's freest city. Joshua Wong, one of Hong Kong's most prominent activists, said that the law marks the end of Hong Kong that the world knew before. The security law is a sweeping change to how Hong Kong will be governed. Beijing persecuted protesters under existing laws, but now it's illegal to even talk with international NGOs about Hong Kong's deteriorating freedoms. It's illegal to wave a pro-independence flag. Those who do face prison, internment in labor camps, or forceful re-education centers. The bill gives Beijing the power to oversee law enforcement in Hong Kong. For the first time, there will be mainland security agencies in Hong Kong and extradition of Hong Kong people to the mainland for trial. This all goes against the rights of the people in Hong Kong, like freedom of speech, the freedom to protest, and their right to an entirely independent judiciary, as outlined in the basic law their version of the constitution. There has in fact been gradual incursions into these freedoms for several years now, leading to ongoing protests. The difference is, now these protesters will be thrown in jail. The introduction of the security law effectively ends one country, two systems, 27 years early, and breaks the terms of the agreement Britain and China made about handing over Hong Kong. In response, the UK said it will offer millions of people in Hong Kong a route to citizenship. A new route for those with British national overseas status to enter the UK and thereafter to apply for citizenship. The enactment and imposition of this national security law constitutes a clear and serious breach of the Sino-British Joint Declaration. What is this joint declaration he's talking about? Let's have a brief history lesson. From 1842, the island of Hong Kong was actually owned by Britain, not China, and Britain built it up into the free trade nexus of the East. Since 1860, the area known as Kowloon was also owned by Britain. In 1898, the Qing government agreed to extend Hong Kong territory, which the British said was necessary to ensure proper military defense of the colony around the island. This extended area of Hong Kong was leased to the United Kingdom for 99 years, expiring in mid-1997. Claude MacDonald, the British representative during the convention, picked a 99-year lease because he thought it was as good as forever. Britain did not think that they would ever have to give back the extended area known as the New Territories. However, as the end of the New Territories lease approached, it became clear that China did expect the New Territories to be returned, and as such, the security of the remaining areas became uncertain. Negotiations began, and in the 1984 Sino-British Joint Declaration, Britain agreed to transfer the entire colony, including the Hong Kong areas actually owned by Britain, back to China in 1997. But this was only if China would guarantee Hong Kong's autonomous economic and political systems for 50 years. The system was called One Country, Two Systems, and it was formalized in the Basic Law document, which was to stay in effect until 2047. One of the things promised under Basic Law was universal suffrage, the ability of the Hong Kong people to elect their own representative. However, 20 years after the agreement had been made, this still hadn't happened, so protesters took to the streets. This was the Umbrella Movement of 2014. The demands for universal suffrage were never met. In 2019, China introduced the Extradition Bill that would allow Hong Kong people to be forcibly taken to mainland China for trial. Protesters again took to the streets and were met with brutality, disappearances, torture and imprisonment. This week, the introduction of the security law officially ends one country, two systems. The human rights abuses of China are well documented, and losing a bastion of freedom like Hong Kong to their system is devastating. For over 150 years, from 1842 to 1997, the British were in control of Hong Kong. By the time of the handover, Hong Kong had its own judicial system, tax system, and money. People in Hong Kong speak Cantonese, not Mandarin, the official language of China, and they have a very different culture. And although the people of Hong Kong are ethnically Chinese and feel connected to the Chinese, the vast majority do not consider themselves Chinese. But these people have been overruled by an authoritarian government bent on crushing political dissent. 
China now has assimilated the city into the mainland. International support for the people of Hong Kong has been widespread. The president of the European Council said, we deplore this decision by China. Canada announced that they were scrapping their extradition agreement and as well as the UK, Australia is also considering offering visas to Hong Kong citizens. In the US, a bill has been introduced that would grant priority for refugee status to people of Hong Kong. This week also, the US began winding down their special trade relationship with Hong Kong and passed legislation to penalize banks who do business with Beijing officials. China told the United States to stop interfering in Hong Kong affairs and warned that they would forcefully resist. Protests remain strong in Hong Kong, but their fight just got a lot harder. On Wednesday, the Hong Kong police force announced that at least 370 protesters had been arrested in violation of the new national security law. The protesters' slogan, Liberate Hong Kong, Revolution of Our Times, has been ruled to be in breach of the law as it suggests subversion of the state power. One man was arrested for possession of stickers. There are dark days ahead for Hong Kong and it's tragic to see the light in one of the world's most vibrant cities be dimmed. But the value of Hong Kong isn't in the roads or the buildings, it's in the people. So now, the world needs to open their doors and let them in. If you'd like to help me make more videos like this, head over to the NBTV members page. You'll get a whole bunch of exclusive content just for NBTV members. A huge shout out to all the members who make this channel possible. Sharing the video and subscribing also really helps. Thank you so much for watching.